Well, I've always done a, um, a bit of teaching, but what I really find that I love is teaching students through doing research, through doing projects. So you kind of see the, the students kind of light up when they realize all that math they've been learning or all that uh, book learning they've been doing actually matters for something. And so you see them going from like, I'm learning this because everybody tells me to learn this to, I'm learning this because it's absolutely necessary for what I want to do in my life. And this stuff matters. My name is Thad Starner. I am a professor of computing at Georgia Tech. I'm also a technical lead and manager on Google Glass. I grew up in Pennsylvania, just a little south of Amish country, a place called York, Pennsylvania, which is the United States' second capital. One thing that I really want to do is something called augmented memory. You know, just like we have eyeglasses that help us see better. You put them on in the morning, you use them, you don't think about them again, you just see through them. Can we make devices which we can think through? that can actually help us learn lessons, do tasks and that are so fast and so easy to use that we don't think about it at all. We just think through the devices. First one where I actually had a very specific a goal of making a wearable computer was trying to make a, a wearable computer where the screen was on one side and the keyboard was on the other. And so the idea was to make something that was just on your forearms that had the full full laptop computer. And you could go around, you know, typing by you know typing over here and seeing the screen here. And that didn't work out so well. It turns out when you put computers on like that, it ends up being body armor. And so when a door slams back at you, you instinctively kind of block it and it's not not a good scene. A uh, master student uh, thinking uh, wanting to do some you know exoskeleton robotic type thing that was a, a, a haptics device. Something try, doing the exoskeletons really takes a lot of effort. So I said here try something this try this crazy idea. Why don't you make this glove that taps the fingers and see if we can actually teach people how to play piano. And to my surprise it worked. Caitlin came and showed how we could go from single finger, single note melodies to doing full Mozart Turkish march style things where you have chords with different rhythms and different hands. She really kind of broke it open for us. And then she said, well, can we apply this to other domains? Like, can we do it for teaching people how to type Braille, which is also a chorded system? And she showed that you could do that. Can we teach Morse code with it, which is a rhythm system? And she showed that you could do that. And so now she's working on trying to show that we can actually use these gloves to help people recover sensation dexterity after a traumatic event like stroke. I had a, a friend uh, who was making a dog vest company. She had made custom dog vests on Etsy. So why don't you come in and we'll show you how to make you know, electronic textiles that will light up and change color and do cool things as the dog moves. And Claire was all excited about the fashion for the, for the dogs with the, the textiles. And then I, I find them and then Melody makes some sort of joke, says, yeah, we should just make a dog vest that helps the dogs talk. So Ratchet is one of our participants, one of our, our, our researchers, and what we're doing is trying to use a wearable device to actually get different vocalizations uh, from them. So we can actually sort of uh, understanding, uh, understand a uh, dog's stress level and what they're trying to communicate uh, with, their, with their natural vocalizations. Um, now maybe we can actually train them to use their, their voices to control stuff as well. At least that's the hope. And the Georgia Tech Police called us up and said, we saw on CNN or wherever it was that you can make, you know, vests that help dogs talk. It's like, well, yeah. I said, can we do that with our bomb sniffing dogs? You have bomb sniffing dogs? And so the Georgia Tech Police have been great supporters of ours ever since they teach us that the dogs know the difference between, you know, C4 and peroxide bombs. Um, they can smell the difference. Can we just have them? tell you the difference so you know what to, which bomb to go after and what to, what to do with the bomb because the C4 bomb is stable, a peroxide bomb isn't, right? Um, I still have, uh, I still show people when I'm doing demonstrations um, at a conference. Uh, during my talks I'll say, uh, we're going to do two, two experiments here. I want you to raise your hand when you're done with each of them. The first thing I ask people is, what time is it? I do it at the same time and I raise my hand, right? And it's 2.32, right? But then I ask them for things like, where is Mount Pinatubo? Right. And now I have the answer. And of course, everybody else doesn't even bother doing it because it takes so long to get their watch or to get their phone to the right mode in order to actually do a web search. For me, it's just part of something I can do pretty quickly so that you know, it doesn't really interrupt the flow of the conversation.